Today we're going to talk about the positional patch. The Nilfgaard patch was last month. Now we got our new positional patch. There are a lot of things in here that I didn't, like in this patch, that I didn't know about until recently. So they're not in my top five list. I'm going to hit them really quick. One is the monster passive has changed. It no longer takes cards that you, you know, spawned from your deck. Only cards you directly play from your hand will count towards your monster passive. I don't know how this will affect non-monster cards that you got from Operator or Johnny. So, but for the most part, this is a great change because the amount of times I've seen a monster player carry a Foglet over to the next round and then lose it is too common. Another thing, locking, unlocking. Yes, I did know about this earlier, but it wasn't in my top five list. It should be touched upon. Now you can unlock cards that were previously locked. It seems that they're moving to in the direction of having really strong locking cards. Cleaver and Ox look like they're going to have a buff. They were already in a lot of decks, but now they're kind of a, a check on a lot of the annoying factors that were prevalent in the previous in, well, in the Nilfgaard patch with the uh, dwarf decks and stuff. Uh, we're going to go down the list a little bit more. Uh, next thing we got here is... Uh, oh yes, they're changing the connection issues. So they're doing a lot of behind the works, behind the hood stuff. So there's the development team at PG, CG Product Red, and then there's the GOG team that works on networking and matchmaking. And if you've ever been disconnected, you instant lose. So they're working on trying to make that less problematic, especially for players who disconnect more often than others. A single packet loss, it seems, is all it takes to lose uh, a match. And that can be really frustrating if you're playing ranked and you're about to win. I I've seen my opponents lose right before they win, and I've lost be right before I win, won a match. So. Disconnects are a uh, nasty business. With that all, all, all of that out of the way, we can go through the top five list. The first thing on the list, of course, is positional, the I introduction of positional effects and just positioning in period. So now, instead of just playing a card to a row, you play it to a row and then in a slot on that row. Things like Torveld and, you know, Agile cards, you're gonna have like multiple like steps just to get the card in the right place. Positioning adds a lot of complexity, but it also can be a little clunky for a beginner player because they're not going to have a lot of cards that benefit from positioning. And their opponents, if they're also beginners, are not going to have cards that affect their side of the board based on positioning. But this positioning allows for an important change. Not only is it providing complexity, but it's also reducing significantly the impact of Well, the impact of you know, cards that buff and debuff things. There's now an upper bound to Thunderbolt Potion and Manticore Venom. An upper bound to Commander's Horn, which we can see right here. It's kind of like the star of the show. We can move down. Yeah, Thunderbolt Potion here. Uh, you can't read it very well, but it only does four... It buffs things four strength to three units uh, that are side by side. So with this change is also the uh, removal of Witcher effects. Uh, I forgot to put that on the list earlier. Witchers no longer interact with Thunderbolt potions. Um, and we'll get to that later, actually. Um, but positionally speaking, let's say I get 10 Harpies eggs on the board and then turn them all into Harpies with Cicelino Harpy. I can't get a bunch of points from a Thunderbolt Potion just because I have all those Harpies on the board. This puts an upper bound to Thunderbolt Potion. It can only do a max of 12 points. Now they might tweak that a bit. Manticore Venom is the same. It can only do a maximum of 12 points now that it's been changed to fit into the positional logic. Another card to talk about is Kira Mentz. Let's see if she's on here. There she is. Kira. So Kira uh, has changed that now that the right unit 
will get the strength of a unit on the left. I'm probably going to think this is a problematic effect, and I hope they don't put in a bunch of these. Because every time I'm going to use Kiromance, it's going to be like this. Left, right, left, right. Or for you guys, r left, right. <laughs> like, which one's getting the strength of the other one? Because it's going to be like Scorch all over again. Everybody scorches their own side of the board at some point. Kiromance is going to be the situation where you're going to set the strength of your right, uh, the, your weak unit, I mean your strong unit, to the strength of your weak unit, debuffing your own side of the board. Because there's nothing on the card that prevents you from doing it. Now also you can play it disloyally, which is also cool, so you can say, oh you have this 2 point card and this 48 point card? Let's change that. Uh, you're going to have to play around Kiromets if you're playing a, car, a deck that buffs things a lot. So if you're playing Nilfgaard and you are buffing like a huge Emperor Brigade, like they did in the stream, and you put a and you pull over your spies onto your side of the board, you're going to have to be careful that your Emperor Brigade doesn't get set to two strength through Kiromets. Now, of course, using a gold card to do that. I'm not sure whether or not that's worth, but it's a little bit more versatile than it used to be. Now, I'm not exactly sure if I like making Kiromets a, a power switcheroo card, because I don't know what the lore is for Kira for, to do that. I'll, yeah. Uh, so, again, to summarize, positional changes are really focused on making things, limiting the bounds, the possible bounds a card could have, and adding complexity to the game. I think beginners might find it frustrating, but it'll end up being a benefit to the game. Next thing is RNG elements. So the great staple child of this is Draug. Uh, Draug now does remove one strength from a, a random opposing unit seven times. So that means that the upper bound for Draug is 14 points swing when it's played. That makes it slightly better than Geralt, and you could also use it as pseudo removal. So let's say your opponent plays Octus first, then you just play Drog, and then the Octus is dead. That is actually, I would consider, a worth play. Um, I don't think that this is bad. So RNG, uh, the big argument that the uh, community is having on it is between what the camp that's against all RNG aside from, you know, you draw cards from your deck and that's random. And those who are fine with RNG. CD Projekt Red seems to have the philosophy that plenty of people like RNG. I would consider myself one of those people who think RNG is generally okay. I like flashy effects. RNG has the potential of having something really flashy and exciting happen. Now, I also think that there should be bounds on randomness so that it doesn't get too out of control. Uh, I think people kind of overreacted and think, oh no, Gwent is becoming the new uh, Hearthstone. No, it isn't. It, the slippery slope is kind of far off for that to happen. So, what is the bounds in Hearthstone that makes people kind of cringe whenever they see RNG? Well, if Yog Sharon has a really wide bounds, he can play all the random cards, all the random special or spell cards in the game. Uh, Babbling Book is the same way. Uh, Piloted Shredder has the potential of bringing in a Doomsayer. So in Hearthstone, the bounds of randomness are so wide that uh, you don't know what's going to happen in a, some games just because one random effect can throw it in a completely wild direction. Gwent's not going that direction. Yes, there's a lot of random things in the game, and some of those random things are going away. Um, like, for instance, Emissary's getting changed. Look at the top two bronze units in your deck, play one, and place the other back randomly into your deck. Now, this is actually much better. Emissary's getting a huge buff. But Emissary is also... Uh, no longer random. You're, you're getting, well, it's not as random. It's getting just the top two ra uh, bronze cards from your deck. And then you get to look at them and choose. <laughs> it's a bet, in many ways, this is a better, it's like a 
It's a Priscilla for a uh, bronze Priscilla. In a lot of ways. Now, of course, Priscilla can get gold cards and whatnot, but this is great too. I think Priscilla can get gold cards, but they might have changed that. Oh, that's the wrong card. I put press print. Oops. Uh, cancel. Find. Priscilla. Uh, oh no, they changed it to non gold cards, so Priscilla's changed. I thought that might happen. So ran randomness has moved down, and I think that in the end of the day, the argument is since randomness is bounded enough, uh, it's not a bad thing. There's good RNG and there's bad RNG. It's bad when it's like it, one random effect can completely define the entire game. It's good RNG when it's ve that is extremely rare, but the card has the randomness is to limit the bounds of the card. The car, um, draw can't be used as removal later into the round because there's too many units on the board and the chances of it killing any particular unit are so slim to none that you're, you're just using it for points effectively. You can use it as removal with weather, but you put up the setup for it and then, then it's completely fine. Um, I'm not going to talk about Stambleford's Tremors because they're still working on that card and the card we saw in the stream isn't the same. Next thing that's changed is gold immunity. So if I go and find Triss uh, or, well, they don't have it on this page, but Triss and a bunch of other cards have been, they lo lost their effect to damage gold units. So gold units as a whole have lost their, um, have become immune to damage. The immediate thing the community latched on is how in the world are we going to deal with Bork? or Villain Trettenmare. Um, and I think that that is a good question. Is Villain Trettenmare going to be the best card ever? Uh, that is potential we have to see. Uh, Shackles might be the good answer to that. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, they don't have Shackles in this either, but Shackles I hear is changing, so Shackles might become a locked card, and you can use that to take care of villain threat America, who knows <laughs> but the important thing here is that I think that gold cards should be immune and I like that I think that gold immunity is a move in the right direction but it would mean that gold cards will have to be more bounded so that they can't become ridiculous like Jennifer Conjurer was in the last patch where like, you had to remove her or else you would lose the round most of the time because she was getting so much value. Okay, next thing on the list is emotes, which are here at the top of this thing. So emote wheel is coming in with avatars. I like the idea of avatars. I want to have a Dijkstra avatar where I can just swear at my opponent. Now, of course, the Peggy 14 table or whatever it is is going to prevent me from doing that, but... It's, I think, I want to be able to communicate to my opponent a little bit, and I also want to communicate as a Witcher character, so this is good. Um, and if you're wondering what I'm looking at, it's my notebook. Okay, the argument against this is, oh, people are a bunch of, you know, the only reason to communicate in the game is to bad manner your opponent. I'm like... Can't we have a little bit of fun? Not everything has to be based on the worst experience possible, and the the worst stuff doesn't have to define the entire you know, experience. We don't have to cater to the worst of our natures and say that because bad people exist, nothing, uh, no communication exists. Like that would mean everybody would lock themselves inside their houses and not use the internet if the fact is you know, bad communication or like bad experience communicating has occurred or somebody said, you know, insulted you that shouldn't have insulted you. Yes, that stuff shouldn't happen and or we should try to reduce the amount of bad interactions as possible, but we shouldn't do it in such a way that prevents all communication. I, I'm for having communication in video games. Even in video games where communication isn't necessary for the play. Like, 
you're not going to play with a teammate in Gwent, so communication isn't necessary. And they're thinking about changing some of it. I want to be able to talk to players in Gwent a little bit easier. Uh, the, one of the issues is that communication is currently, aside from this emote wheel, communication is handled by GOG's team. And like anybody who's played, you know, you use the friend list from GOG to uh, have friend matches and send messages in game. And if you ever see so-and-so whispered me or messaged me, that's because they're a friend on GOG. And they're the ones going to handle that. We'll have to see where they do it because... Right now, it is very, I would almost say it's alpha levels of communication at the in the present state. And whatever the um, positional patch brings is going to probably be for the best. Uh, the next thing we're getting here is simplification. So we talked about Witcher potions and the like earlier. Uh, so previously, or like currently, the potions had a bonus for Witchers. They remove a whole chunk of text and remove that effect. Now the Witcher potions read much more simply. And the Witchers also remove their, uh, any bonus text that they had. They didn't, but uh, <laughs> this will mean that there will have to be other Witcher synergies in the future, much like there will have to be Dryad and um, Mage synergies later that have cards that work with those cards. Um, but the removal of this, while I don't, I would rather that the potions have effects on witchers that are special because those potions aren't really meant for non-witchers to drink. Bad things happen when you drink witcher potions and you're not a witcher. <laughs> um, but it does make the text much more readable, so it brings up simplification. While the Boar of the Sea was a big hit in, um... Simplification, it used to spawn um, pirates in the bottom of your deck. Now it just, uh, it's like a Mithabrock. So let's see if we can find uh, Wild Boar of the Sea. There we go. Wild Boar of the Sea. Remove three strength, two strength, and one strength. One of the things that you'll notice is it says three strength from non-gold unit, non-gold unit, non-gold unit. They're thinking about removing the word non-gold unit now that we have solidified solidified in our minds that gold units are immune to damaging effects. The whole reason why non-gold unit had to be included in a bunch of cards was because gold units were not immune to everything. Now they're immune to a bunch of stuff, you don't need that extra text. And so one of the moves of the simplification stuff is to make that. Wild Boar of the Sea is now much simpler. Its upper bounds is 12 points, but because it's effective removal, um, it's much better than, say, Geralt, which is 12 points, literally. Removal is always going to be extremely helpful, especially when you can place the points out more um, specifically. Gold cards aren't as are a little bit more weird in Skellige because they don't benefit it doesn't benefit from their passive to have gold cards well it doesn't benefit monsters either but uh gold cards yeah this is i think this is an okay card now um we'll probably see some of it in the meta but i'm not sure how well how often we'll see it because there are so many good gold cards still uh, that's pretty much it. Dijkstra got also got changed, but I think Dijkstra, the new Dijkstra is, um, I think the new Dijkstra is going to be used for combo decks and maybe with Johnny as well to maximize the amount of golds you have. He, I think the new Dijkstra is going to be okay because he just now is like a spy that pulls a gold card from your deck. Pretty much, get, you know, gives you an extra ex chance to getting those game-winning gold cards that you need. And some gold cards will probably be OP. Uh, oh, they also made a uh, Lubricant Permadeath. So that you can't just revive the Lubricants, which is what I was doing the last patch. With ridiculous results. Yep. I don't know. So that's my top five. I hope you guys like that. 
to summarize, they put a bunch of bounds in the game. They've been doing this for a while. Um, bounding cards to prevent them from being too powerful or too weak. Hawker Healer no longer can just buff a bajillion things on the board well, on a row. It's now much li more limited. Same for um, Thunderbolt Potion and Manticore Venom. They're all just bounded. RNG is bounded, is number two. RNG has been bounded in this game. Some of the cards have less RNG, like Emissary. Some of them have more, like Draug. But since the RNG isn't bad, RNG, it's not like pulling every card from the entire game. It's limiting stuff to what you have. Kind of like Emissary, it was only pulling cards from your deck. It wasn't giving you access to everything. So your opponent didn't have to play around everything. I think it's good. RNG. Three, we had the uh, emote wheel. So, uh, well, yeah, we had uh, gold immunity. I like gold immunity. Enough said. It's also going to simplify the game later when it removes all the non gold units. Uh, we have the com added communication to the game through avatars and emotes. I like that. Some people are against it. And final, we have simplification. And while well, simplification will remove some of the exciting effects that I like, I liked the idea of Wild Boar of the Sea in the previous patch, but it didn't pan out uh, to be something that you could actually do effectively. So it became a joke card. The new Wild Boar of the Sea is a lot like Mithabrak, but and a lot more simple like of an effect I think that's fine I think that will there will still be exciting cards in the future I just hope they don't make every you know every effect kind of within spinning distance of another effect we already know that Triss um, Roach and Ivoreth are basically you know one more point of damage one point less of you know base, uh, base strength that's all that's really happening to them so they're all like spitting distance from each other. I don't want like a bunch of those kind of cards. Like, I do want more of the old versions of Wild Boar of the Sea out in the game in the future. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great day.